Hello and welcome back to Psalm Talks. This week I had the pleasure of having an insightful conversation with Joshua Margolis. He is the owner of a New York based fitness company called Mind Over Matter. Joshua has it all. With over 22 years of experience, a bachelor's degree in sports psychology, and several certifications under his belt, including postpartum and prenatal fitness, Joshua brings a bulk of knowledge to this episode. You are going to be noticing as you hear the episode that not only is he methodical and realistic in his approach, he's extremely invested in the people that he works with. I was making notes while I was recording the episode, and I believe you're going to find a lot of information in this for you that is going to be useful. So, if you are in the premises of starting your own wellness journey or are in any stage of your own wellness journey, this episode is for you. Let's begin. Joshua Margolis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Sarah. So, the first time I met you through the V5O community and I saw your energetic aura, <laughs> and there was a conversation regarding, I think, mindset. And I, and I know that I narrowed down to you and I was like, Joshua, we have to connect because I felt like we just have so much in common in my head <laughs> yeah. that we can talk about. And then the option of podcasting came over and I thought it would be perfect because you have been in this field for a long time and Mind Over Matter is something which I find is in alignment with Psalm and the followers and listeners of Psalm Talks. So I'm very excited to have you over. Thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. You don't have to thank me. I've been looking forward to it. And and, and I agree. I think there was some uh, synergy we had right out of the box. So uh, that's, you know, that's not something I, I take lightly. That's definitely a connection. Yeah. So let's get right into it. Mind Over Matter, it is a company that you own right now. And it has an amazing um, philosophy behind it. So why don't you first tell us a little bit about Mind Over Matter, and then we'll get to a little bit about your story and how Mind Over Matter was actually created. Yeah, no, fantastic. Uh, so Mind Over Matter is a training platform. It's a health and wellness platform. It's a platform that reaches individuals on a fitness, physical level, physiologically. It's a platform that goes after the mental, the psychological component. And it's a platform that goes after the, the eating, the nutritional component. Uh, we're a team of about 15 plus professionals uh, across a various fitness disciplines, personal trainers, Pilates instructors, yoga instructors. Uh, we're mind over matter. So we have a, a big concentration in mind-body disciplines, meditation, Tai Chi, Qigong. We have specialty instructors, boxing coach, a marathon coach, triathlete, uh, dance instructors. Um, we do chefing and meal prepping services. Uh, we do something, as I like to say, for everyone. And it's my responsibility to find that person's potential client anyway, their fitness match. I've been called a fitness matchmaker a lot of times. <laughs> people call that to me. So we work with people in two different ways, in person, and that tends to be New York City focused, and then virtual. And that tends to be around the world. We work with individuals one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and we work with groups. Um, we work with uh, different organizations, companies, uh, civic groups, religious organizations, uh, retiree groups, any organization that wants to provide a little extra uh, incentive for health and wellness for their people, we come mm -hmm. in and we'll do a class uh, on a bevy of fitness disciplines. Yeah, I absolutely appreciate your commitment to health and wellness. And it is it is extremely laudable that you have something for everybody. And even organizations and it could be seniors, that is that's not easily found for a company to be so committed and so varied in its palette to have something for everyone. And I really like the term uh, matchmaker when it comes to health. Um because yeah, it seems like you're really well, you're really thorough with a whole wellness platform and what exactly somebody would need in order to upgrade their health. 
So good on you, Joshua. I feel like I want to jump in. I want to be a part of Mind Over Matter too. (laughs) Of course, of course. All right. So where did this all start? Right. So as we were talking before, I guess every good story is preceded by an origin story, right? It's every yeah. every great superhero has the, the origin story. I wasn't bitten by a radioactive spider or anything like that. <laughs> I'm not a eccentric billionaire who has access to the best technology. Uh, Are you sure? <laughs> that's can, my, I, can I take yeah, you on that? <laughs> that's my alter ego. I can't, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. Uh, so, you know, look, I, I started, you know, even as a kid, I was an athletic kid, but never, it's funny when people find out what I do, uh, and I started as a personal trainer, that's how I got my sort of, you know, that's how I got uh, wet behind the ears in this industry, in that role. The people are shocked to find out that I was never like the premier athlete. That was never me. I was never the person, you know, some of these people, they step on a field or on a court or whatever, and they instantly are the best player. I, I was an average athlete at, at best. I always had to work as hard, if not harder than anybody on the team to have Hmm. success. And I knew that as a kid. And I remember like my father telling me this, you know, it's like, Hey, you can play all these sports, but you're not going to be this kid. He was very frank with me that just will walk on the court and going to be blessed. You're going to have to practice. If it's important enough to you, you're going to have to work hard and you're going to have to decide which one of these sports you like doing the best. And at a young age, I developed this work ethic to be whether it was the best lacrosse player I could be, the best basketball player I could be, the best swimmer I could be. And I played every in any sport um, because I I loved it. I loved just the idea of not just the competition, but I loved the way even as a kid, and I didn't quite grasp it, how it made me feel, how Mm -hmm. the release of all these endorphins in my body and the serotonins and all these things that as a kid, I didn't, I didn't know what this was. I just was like Mm -hmm. sweaty and would come home all excited. I learned as into adulthood, these are the same things that, that we still crave. We don't know that as, as kids, we just do it because it's fun, but that's Mm -hmm. sort of how I I got into it. I really had to work hard to have any success that, you know, was afforded to me. It was really all of the extra effort and attention that I put into it. Yeah, I really like the role of your dad here. Right. I like how he stepped on, stepped in really early on, and he said it to you as you needed to hear to build your work ethic. I think that is when the work ethic started to be very. You started to adhere to it quite well, right. um, and now I'm pretty sure because the reason I mentioned that is once you have a company, once you are working on a bigger scale, these little traits that we carry on from childhood. They really help us out, don't you think? Yeah, they do. It, it, it is. It's just, you know, like fitness and wellness. It, it, we, we were saying this as well. Wellness is life. Life is wellness. Yeah. It's not, it shouldn't be that this is a component of your life. Exactly. This is part of, part of it. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think the traits that we can are imparted upon us a, as kids, uh, it can transcend into professional life, uh, personal life, uh, wellness, fitness life. It's really imparting those lessons uh, upon us as, as kids. And, and I think most of us probably have a story from our youth, whether it was yeah. a father or a mother or, or a coach or an older sibling or a teacher or something that seemed really innocuous at the time. But we mm-hmm. look back and like, you know what? Like that person kind of steered me a little bit more towards a direction. And sometimes it's even as a kid, you know, my, my father walked this line. He was being rather frank with me saying, hey, listen, you're, yeah. you're, not, you're not that kid. You know, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're not. That, that, that's tough. That was tough to take that. But that he, was was like, t- yeah. he, he was like, but you can be this kid. You can mm-hmm. be that person. You can be. So yeah. uh, I, I guess, you know, you do have to walk a line. Um, you have to know the individual um, and you have to know what you need. As, as a coach, you have to know what to say to them. You know, each person's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, th- that was a little bit of tough love, you know, yeah. and that, but, but it was really needed because he told you, sure, that you are not that person yet, but he showed you the path. Right. It's like, you can get there. You just work hard. And that is what a coach or somebody who wants to push you forward would do. They would exactly. say, 
exactly what you need to do. And so, yeah, that's that's a very endearing, endearing part of your story, Joshua. Um, let's start gearing the conversation towards your clientele. Understanding how diversified it is, it is of massive value for listeners to be able to relate their stories to people that you have helped. So why not we dig into some stories that you think are valuable for people to know and a few takeaways we have from them? Yeah, no, there's so much. And I've been doing this for so long. It's close to 20 years that I started as a trainer way back when, just working at a gym on the Upper West Side of New York City. Uh, And I learned as much about anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, my disciplines, as I did about people. Sometimes Mm -hmm. just being around all these different uh, walks of life, if you just keep your mouth closed and sometimes listen to them, what they have to say, you learn a lot about them. You learn a lot about the rest of the world. We have so many different, you know, as you mentioned, demographics that we work with. Uh, Mm -hmm. One of our concentrations is actually the prenatal postpartum uh, uh, market. Yeah. So we work a lot with with moms-to-be, new moms, uh, you know, and, and this started... I wish I could say there was some master plan. It, it, it wasn't. It was one of my first clients ever worked with who became pregnant. I wanted to continue working with her. So I went and took all these certifications to become prenatal postpartum certified just to work with her and do a better job mm-hmm. with her. And and I learned a lot through this process. And subsequently, a lot of the women that I work with, I'm, I'm now a father. My daughter is, is nine. So I went through this nine um, years ago too, but I joke all the time that I knew more about pregnancy than any single man should ever know at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, I heard it from the other side. I did. Yeah. So it was very, you know, so I learned a lot about resiliency of, of not just the body, but the mind, like a lot of these women that I would work with, I mean, you know, especially later into pregnancy, feeling the way they would feel, but still being able to get up and get out Mm -hmm. and do something active. You know, that was what I was more impressed with anything. I mean, the physiological changes, the hormonal changes, but yet they were dialed in enough to say, look, hey, this is my time. This is my workout time. I'm doing it. Maybe I don't Mm -hmm. feel my best, but I'm Mm -hmm. doing so. Seeing that, it made me realize I I can't complain about maybe an off day that I have or a bad day that I have. They're, (laughs) They're willing to do all this. So I think I learned yeah. a lot through that. On the other end of the spectrum, we touched on as well, uh, some of the senior fitness clients that we work with. And a lot of these people, you know, it was a different generation coming up. I suppose now fitness is synonymous with life, but people in their 70s and 80s now, when they were coming up, there was no personal trainers. There were no, yeah. you know, th- that didn't exist. That didn't uh, exist. Yeah. yeah. If you, maybe you work with a physical therapist, you have an injury. Or if you're an athlete, mm-hmm. you work with coaches, but they never had the accessibility that people today have that you can just yeah. add a snap of finger, get a, a, a personal trainer or a, a yoga instructor or a client. You can get somebody to work with mm-hmm. you. So for these people to be at a certain point in their lives and mm-hmm. be open to a change, change yeah. can be difficult. And especially as we get older, to change yeah. your mindset, to change your I was impressed with a lot of them saying, hey, listen, you know what? I, I need somebody. I need somebody to help me. Um, I'm further on in life. Most of it's in the rear view, but I want to live a higher quality of it. Why I yeah. still have this life ahead of me. What What is left? So I, I love that about them as well. There's the, the motivation level to, to make these changes. Um, so yeah. there's across the board, people in different stages in, in life, because in one way or another, we are all going to be in these different phases. Um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with the prenatal, obviously I was never going to be pregnant, but I, with, you know, I became with my, my wife and went through that experience and hopefully God willing, I will have the life where I'm 80 years old and I'm still exercising and, and taking care of myself. Um, yeah. So you learn because you, if you pay attention, you know, you're going to be in these positions yourself. Yeah. You know, what I find really fascinating is when you're older, 60 or 70 years old, what is the incentive to get up and moving? 
because when you're younger, there's just so much out there, right? There, you can put yourself on social media, you can go out with friends, it, you energize yourself. It's so much fun. Your body's able to do it as well, whatever you want to do. You go for a run, go for a hike, mountain climbing, you name it. But when you're older, it's tougher. The incentive is less. So people kind of give up, you know, they think, oh, that, that life is not for me. It was for me when I was in my younger days. <laughs> right, so right. <laughs> I would, as somebody who, I'm 30. So right. as a 30-year-old, when I listen to a 60-year-old or a 70-year-old showcasing that kind of motivation, I look at myself and go like, Sarah, you cannot be sleeping on your <laughs> time. No, no. It, it is. It, 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 you know, you can look and draw something and learn from something from that situation. Uh, I was just telling the story the other, the other a couple of weeks ago. This was years ago. I was down in Florida, in Fort Myers, West Coast of Florida, beautiful area. Um, yeah. We stayed at a condominium complex. I was down with a buddy of mine and uh, we went to play tennis. I'm not a tennis player at all. Uh, you know, I'm a decent athlete, but, uh, and this guy showed up. This guy was in his early 80s. He was a resident wow. there. And wow. he said to my friend and I, do you guys want to play? And we both looked at each other. Uh, yes, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> yeah. And we started volleying. I can't tell you, Sarah, I was blown away by this guy's ability. As a younger man, he, there's no question this guy was a competitive player. Because in his wow. 80s, he was volleying with us. And wow. at the end of this time, we are there for an hour. We went to the clubhouse. He bought us beers. He was just so happy to have someone to play with, yeah. to engage with. And he's like, you know, it's funny. It's like a lot of the guys my age, he would say he can't play against. He liked yeah. having this, this workout. And yeah. we played with him almost every day when we were down there, just like an hour, just volleying back and forth. And, uh, you know, I, I got so much joy just from seeing the joy on, on his face. He just, you know, we had a great yeah. time. 80 year old. Amazing how he could keep up. Blown away. Like, yeah. If the ball was too far, he knew to let it go. I think at a certain point, you got to say, yeah, I'll let that one go. Yeah. He's not yeah. Dying for, but this guy could control the tempo. Anytime the ball was yeah. hit to him, he was able to place the, the ball. And, uh, you know, when we talk about, look, he's outside, he's, he's outdoors, he's in the fresh air, he's getting some yeah. sun, he's getting, you know, some cardiovascular work. Yeah. And this is how he, there's no, this is the reason why he's in his 80s and he's still having this life where he can, you know, move that and he had two knee operations but these things happen you know you have to these are surgeries that are going to happen as we get older and yeah absolutely technology is there now like the hip surgery so much better than it used to be knee surgeries mm -hmm. these things are getting better for they everybody are. yeah yeah um absolutely so while you were talking about the diversified clientele a question came to my mind and that was People don't really realize when they see a trainer saying that if you want to get trained, you know, hit me up over here, reach me out over here, I can help you. People don't realize how transformative coaching can be, wellness coaching. Right. So I would love it if you could elaborate a little bit on that, because right. it seems like there are just a lot of trainers out there, but there are a few good ones. And not everybody is able to showcase how transformative it is. Right. You know? Right. No, that, that's a good point. And, and I think it speaks, we keep talking about wellness. Like, so what does wellness really mean? You know, it's, mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's a lot of these terms we like to use uh, as answers or incorporating different concepts and ideas. But wellness refers to totality of self, not just the physical not just the mental, but the spiritual, all, all these entities having a, that is true. a healthier version of, of these. So uh, when we work with individuals, we, we try to make that from the outset, like this is what the value is going to be. It's not just about, hey, this is the exercise, do the exercise. You know, it's you want to yeah. take stock in, in what you're doing. You want to know why you're doing what you're doing. You want to feel what you're doing mm -hmm. rather than just like, you know, reading off of a checklist or looking at a video and following it step for step. You want to have mm -hmm. a reflection and introspection in that moment of what you're doing. Um, look, and we'll talk about this too, but you know, my background is sports psychology. So obviously yeah. for me, I take a huge mental component into it. And I think, you know, when people find out 
about what I do with exercise, they're just assuming, you know, neck down. It's actually this first, the yeah. mind first, and then the body follows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those cliches, like the what the the mind is the most powerful muscle in the body, or it's ninety yeah. percent mental. They're so cliched, Sarah. I get it, but <laughs> I, I, I buy into that. I I do. Yeah. I think I think it's there's true. validity to that. That's right. I think. Yeah. I think people need to look at it from that standpoint. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm going to plug in my story because I think it's required in context. Mm. Uh, when I was 13 years old, I was just really bullied in my school for being overweight by all the kids. Mm. So I was bullied. And then I thought, you know, okay, when I look in the mirror, I know that I'm turning 14. And this is not how I want to look like. I was, I was overweight. I was in the criteria of obesity. So I just want to give a trigger warning for some listeners here, because this can be a sensitive topic. Um, So moving into the story, what happened was that I started to educate myself about nutrition through Google. And I learned that, you know, how many calories Apple is and what is junk food, what's healthy food. And I decided to change my life in quotes. The reason is I could really see in my mind the transformation my life is going to take if I just put in this this work right now. In my early teenage years, if I make the right changes, I'm going to getting I'm I'm going to get rewards for the rest of my life. So that's how I thought about it in my mind. And I always kept saying to myself, um, I'm determined and I have a higher willpower so I can do this. I'm determined. I have a higher willpower. I lost about 23 kilos. And I, (laughs) I'm giving you, I'm giving you the golf clap right here. Very nice. (laughs) Yeah. I lost a lot of weight. I, I, it was almost like, um, it was on in the span. I have to mention it was in the span of seven months and I had a lot of baby fat. Obviously I used to run around and eat very healthy, like cottage cheese, kiwi, whole wheat, you know, whole wheat bread. And a lot of fruits and vegetables and lean meats and stopped, you know, taking fats because I really wanted um, my body to clean out and the junk food to go away. Uh, Basically, all the toxins in the body to be released as well. Um, And warm water with lemon. Those old wife tales, (laughs) I took some of that. Eventually, I lost the weight. But the crux of the entire story is that it was a mind game. I would not have been able to achieve that transformation had I not been ready for it in my mind. So when you're starting off and things are difficult, because as a 13, 14 year old, a chocolate bar is very enticing. Pizza is really enticing. Yeah, it is. So a bag of chips is really enticing and everything is available to me. But I had decided in my mind that I have to make these good decisions right now. And by good, I mean decisions that are in alignment with my goal in order to live a better life, a healthier life, because I wasn't able to run in the playground before because of being overweight. I wasn't able to be as active as I wanted to. And since I had decided in my mind, I was able to achieve that goal. So when you say, even the name of your company's Mind Over Matter, it cannot be truer than that. It really is mind over matter. Mind really does come first. That's, by the way, that's an amazing story, especially you were, you were a kid. You were so young, you're 14. I mean, to, to be able to make a change like that at, at that age speaks to, to mindset. Most, yeah. you know, most adults, let alone the mind of a 14 year old kid at that time. Although knowing the little bit I do know about you, that does not shock me, uh, that you had the mindset to do that. So good, you know, that's impressive. Yes, certainly.
So listening about your clientele, I would love for you to talk about a few traits that you think are important for people to know. If there were just a few takeaways they can take from this conversation, what would you say it is? Okay. So there's a lot of factors that go into it and a lot of things to do with mindset and approach and your, you know, your, the way psychologically you view uh, fitness and your body. Um, mm -hmm. Things that we all know, but we don't practice. Uh, patience, number one, right? I tell, you know, we're talking before about uh, my, my prenatal postpartum clientele. I always tell my new moms, look at, it took 10 months for your body to change the way it is. Mm -hmm. Give yourself at least 10 months for it to change back. It's not going to yeah. happen overnight. Think about how long it yeah. took. And the same thing, people are looking to gain weight. I'm like, you didn't just wake up and gain 30 pounds. This was that over <laughs> time. You have to yes. be patient with, patient with your body. Uh, mm -hmm. Slow changes are the ones that stick, right? Yeah. Um, epiphanies, while they're amazing, they, Unfortunately, most of us don't have them. If you have them, that's a great then you know, you're able to harness that energy. But it's the idea of a, of a slow change, of a slow burn. I think be, mm -hmm. be patient with yourself. Be realistic with yourself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to, if you're somebody that's not working out, well, as we say, you can't come off the couch and go to five days a week working out. You just, yeah. you can't, it's, it's unsustainable. So to go yeah. from couch to five days a week, you know, you're going to burn out. And, yes. you know, when you burn out, then you have that hill to summit because then mentally you're fried and you, you get discouraged. So, you know, have realistic expectations, okay? You mm -hmm. want to set uh, long-term goals, but you want to set short-term goals every day. Um, I usually tell my clients, you know, the hardest part about working out is just putting on your workout clothes. That, that's it. Like once you do that, yeah, you're, you're, you're there. You're already there. Um, I think. You know, having time, people always think about, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. Everyone's busy. People have lives. People have families. People have job responsibilities, what, what, what have you. It, it's not, time is a fact. There's no question. I can't offer solutions for that. But yeah. it's prior, priority. Priority. Right. Where, where are your priorities, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We all have 24 hours in our day. None of us are living separate, you know, uh, time, time, space continuing here. We're all on the same page. So. Having mm -hmm. a, um, putting the priority on the time, um, yeah. you know, little increments help as well, which is a lot of times when we do our virtual workouts, they're 30 yeah. minutes. We don't do hour long workouts, we do 30. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. The hour long workout can seem daunting. And mm -hmm. also an hour can be a lot of time. So sometimes it's hard to find that hour within the day that you can do it. But right. everyone has 30 minutes. I, I don't care how busy you are. You have 30 minutes somewhere in your day that you can yeah. take time out and, and exercise. So just putting the priority on the time. Um, and, you know, all great things are accomplished with the help of others. You're mm -hmm. not alone. It's hard to do these things solo. In, in any That's endeavor, you, you need someone there, which is why having a trainer in your corner is great. It has provides motivation, but it also provides accountability. You have somebody yeah. that you're beholden to. So working with a professional like that helps because it establishes a, 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 an aura of responsibility to, to oneself. So don't be afraid to have other people come in on what you're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's what we're there for. And absolutely. And to add that professionals come with a bulk load of knowledge. They're certified. They have been in the industry for years. So they have studied transformations and they've studied wellness. And you get to have that kind of resource with you while you're going through your own transformation. And that's why being with a professional is unmatched as Agreed. opposed to trying to do it yourself. I Agreed. I, it's so funny. I talk about this all the time. It's like, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I, I see a dentist. I wouldn't perform dental surgery myself. Uh, if I go to court, I will hire a lawyer. I will not represent myself. If I, yeah. but, but so it, it's the same thing with wellness too. It, it helps to have someone who's a, uh, who's a pro. Mm -hmm. So, so far I've, I have these traits. Number one, patience and allow for slow changes. Number two, be realistic with expectations and set short-term goals. Number three, time 
prioritize your activities. And number four, all great things can be achieved with other people. So here comes your professional guidance from a, you know, a trained, a, a trainer. And yeah, and number five, like wellness is a massive part of life. And if we try to substitute that or lessen the credence of wellness in life, it, you know, we also see the repercussions later on. Right. Or Agreed. a compounded effect of that. Okay, wonderful. So you and I were having, we were having this conversation um, the first time when we were talking about the podcast, and it came up that how important it is to maintain momentum once you start towards your journey. And I love this topic because it seems like it's really misunderstood. People think maintaining momentum means perfection. They think that they have to do what they're meant to do, what, what's on their schedule every single time. If they miss it, they're not able to maintain momentum. There's a lot of shame and guilt as well in the process if they, if they leave out an activity that they had decided to do. And all of a sudden, their momentum collapses and they're not able to achieve their goals. And I would love for you, as somebody who's been in the business for 20 years, which is amazing, I would love for you to elaborate on this for the listeners. Yeah, I mean, you know, another cliche, we're, we're our own harshest critics. Yes. It's, we man, are. it's, you, you can just beat up on yourself until there's nothing left. It's, yeah. you know, we, we have that tendency to, to do that. We do. It's like, you know, this fire that just builds and can consume us, can, can burn it to the ground. It, it, it yeah. can be overwhelming. But I will say on the other side, if that fire is controlled, you can use it to heat your entire building yourself. You can, you can yes. harness it. So it, it, it does work both ways. Breaking yourself down, beating yourself up. You're not accomplishing anything like that. I understand you want to be, you know, hard on yourself. You want to motivate yourself, but but yes. but there is there is a fine line. Every day is different from the previous day. You know, workouts that I do with my clients. You know, we're doing one workout early in the week. They were like, "Oh, I was so much better on Monday. I was so much better on Tuesday." I'm like, "You were," and mm -hmm. that was Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Today is Thursday. <laughs> that that's yeah. not who you are today. And you know what? Yes. When I see you again on Saturday or Sunday or Monday, you won't be what you are today. There's, mm -hmm. there's factors that, that come into play here. Um, mm -hmm. We always talk about like quality of sleep, what you ate the night before. If you have a lot going on in your work or your professional life, it, your anxiety, your stress level. So it's, it's you talk about like managing expectation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, who you are in that moment is who you are. Let's, let's focus on that. I don't, I try not to let my clients get caught up in, and the number sometimes we we're such a number yes. oriented culture and I, and I get it that's this is how we measure ourselves you know yeah people measure themselves in, in weight that's a number in body fat that's a number people measure their self-worth and how much money they make that's a number we measure ourselves where our address in our community if we live on a certain row a street where our address there's it, all that stuff so we, we yeah. can get obsessed by that mm -hmm. um I try to tell people to check in with themselves like how they're feeling in, in that moment and right. the fact that they're seeing me, even if they're not on their A game, is is okay. You know, it's yeah, like it's you okay. did the, you did the hard part. Like I said, you put mm -hmm. the workout clothes on. You, you're you're here. You, you did it. Um, you're gonna ebb and flow. There's no question. Yeah. You know, you're gonna mm -hmm. have good days. You're gonna have bad days. Um, I think just making sure you stay afloat, right? Yeah. And you're always moving, moving towards mm -hmm. that that goal. Some days you're mm -hmm. in a speed boat. Some mm -hmm. days you're just on a life raft letting the current <laughs> take you. But either yeah. way, you're still going in, in, in that direction of, of your goal. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's okay to not be as good every single time. The graph is not linear. Yes, right. that's a great way to put it. Yes, I I exactly. You know, you're not... Uh, it's funny who we look up to sometimes in our in mm -hmm. our cultures in our world the people who are at the pinnacle of their success these people yes. are amazing uh their mindset is amazing but we don't actually see the dark side of it we don't see we don't. you know i i told about this was like a documentary that was like a year or two ago about michael jordan and the chicago bulls and yes you, okay i watched it i yeah. loved it 
he, I mean, mm-hmm. the guy is maybe the greatest athlete oh, man. ever. He's a beast. Yeah. But it had that Amazing. dark side to him. He, he did. That guy can't mm-hmm. turn it off. He, mm-hmm. It's, it's the, it's just the constant, it's unhealthy for most of us to have that, that mindset. He is the rare, one of the rare exceptions to, mm-hmm. to do that. Um, so, you know, we can all look up to somebody like that and we all can draw, uh, parallels from our lives to theirs and we can take something from them and apply it to us but but we're not we're not them we're, we're mm-hmm. you know we are who we are and they are who they are you know there's there is the dark side to that yeah yeah absolutely and i watched that documentary of michael jordan and i sat down and i journaled on what i learned from him cuz he yeah i felt like he had so much wisdom in his competitive nature that I can learn a thing or two. Um, And you know, what was the most fascinating part for me was that he prioritized always having a clear why. Why he needs to win. And sometimes it had a lot of emotion attached to it, or most times I would say for Michael Jordan. And I I could, you know, I could be... um, inaccurate in the details of it but even with his competitors he would have a very clear why why he wanted them to lose and it was it was almost personal but he won the game and he always had that competitive spirit in him and not to say that um he wasn't a team player he definitely was and he did show sportsmanship you know when he lost as well but yeah a great man with a great story and an amazing drive for success. He that's, was. That's so awesome. You, you saw that. Is that was great. It was one of the better <laughs> doc sport documentaries. Yes. Uh, I feel like also it was it was like the height of pandemic, so it gave me something to watch during yeah. during, and during that as well. Uh, but but I agree. I, I, the takeaway for me from that was that no matter what he would have done in his life, he would have been the best at it if he would would have decided to have been a cardiovascular surgeon he would have been the best cardiovascular surgeon if he decided to be a so. a, a, a postal worker he would have been mm-hmm. the best postal worker he yeah. would have been the best at whatever he decided to do yeah because <laughs> you can actually gauge his derive to be good or to be the best actually from um the times when he wasn't the best because that is when he put in more effort. And I remember there was this time when he was filming, but he also had um, a game coming up. So he would, after filming, be practicing with the rest of the team, be working out, making sure he's at the top of the game. He put in the work. So when you're saying, you know, at number number one, patience and have slow changes and be realistic with your expectations, people can see that when they watch the doc- documentary. You, he was realistic with his expectations. He didn't just shoot the ball once. He shot the ball a hundred times. And so by the time he was at the game, he couldn't do it just intuitively. Yeah. It was just, it's just beautiful watching him. Um, okay. So we talked about momentum and I love how you highlighted that it's okay to not be as good every single day. And at the same time, you said that, you know, you just have to keep afloat. You just have to keep going. I would love for you to talk about here, Joshua, the importance of taking breaks and why taking breaks does not mean that you're breaking momentum. It can actually mean that you are working towards increasing it. Definitely. Definitely. I, I think from, a, you know, again, my background being sports, sports psychology, sports behavior, mentally, we need that. You need that, that break. Physically, mm-hmm. you definitely need it. You can't throw a workout down 365 days a year. That's yeah. that's too much on your body, and depending where yeah. you are in life, your age, what have you. But more from a mental, psychological standpoint, you need to take that break. The break does a lot of things, depending on what you do during that break. The break mm-hmm. can be a moment of reflection, looking back on what you've accomplished, taking you know uh, stock in, in yourself, and and really patting yourself on the back for all the hard work and effort and energy you put in. You should take stock of that. And then also yeah. stepping away just for a moment, you know, a little bit of break, maybe gives you clarity on changing your goals going forward. Maybe you yeah. realize, you know what, I undershot a little bit. Maybe I need to change and this should be where I'm, I'm shooting for. And conversely, sometimes you bite off more you can chew and that's fine too. I love ambition. 
it can get us in trouble sometimes, but I love ambition. Maybe you, you yeah. kind of wanted to get a little bit more so you can look back and then you could use that to uh, reevaluate going forward and setting new mm-hmm. goals and new agendas and then realizing what, what's worked for you and what, what hasn't. I, I love feedback from my clients. I'm yeah. like, I, I want you to tell me what you like about it and what you don't like about it. I want you to tell me mm-hmm. what feels good, what doesn't feel good, what you find has been getting you results and what hasn't. Every person mm-hmm. is different. Everybody's going to react differently to different movements and different disciplines. Yeah. So it gives yeah. you a moment to then kind of take stock in that as well and think, all right, yeah, this is what I enjoy this part. This is what gives me the results. This is what makes me feel good. So it gives you a chance to reevaluate everything. And when you pick up, as long as we have these other traits like we discussed, having the patience, mm-hmm. having the accountability, having someone else in the corner, you, yeah. you, will, you will still keep moving forward. You know, like you will still stay yeah. in that gravitational pull because you have all these other uh, uh, nuances and uh, people in your corner and all these other things that kind of keep you motivated. Yeah, yeah. No, that's beautiful. And I really like how you said that um, feedback because a lot of the times people walk into a transformational journey or prioritizing their health or a wellness journey and they think it's going to look what they expect it to look, but it could be that they try something and figure out that they are, there is an alternative to it, which works better for them and their body. Perhaps working out at night is something that they didn't think they are going to be able to do, but working out at night, it works wonderfully for them. Or perhaps, you know, like um, working out after work, they thought was the best time, but it turns out that the morning is the best time. So you kind of have to try and test yourself and see what works best for you. And it's okay if, you know, you didn't, if somebody expected to be an excellent work outer, if that's a term in the morning. And yeah, if they, if they think that they're going to be excellent in the morning, you know, they had their smoothie and they'll be able to like run for like, you know, an hour, but they're not able to do that. And they stop after 20 minutes. That's okay. You just have to see what works for you and not give up. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So it's, um, I think you just covered everything, (laughs) all the main points. I talked a lot. I I talked a lot. So that this is true. (laughs) All the, yeah, no, I think it's extremely valuable to have so much information packed in one episode for anybody who's listening and who is, who's trying to, you know, jump into their own story. So the last section, why don't we talk about some success stories? So some of your favorite success stories that you have seen happen in front of you. Yeah. Oh, that's the best part. I mean, that's why we do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the reward you feel, you see someone else's achievements, their success, yeah. their, their happiness. It's so contagious. You can't help to, to feel that way. I, I have a yeah. client I'm working with right now. Like she's in her early thirties. She was a total stud in high school and college athlete played uh, lacrosse, played softball. Like you can see it in her now. And then after college, just let it all go. That was it. Yeah. Uh, I think it was, you know, when you're an athlete, sometimes you come up in a system where there's always someone there in your ear. There's always a mm-hmm. coach. There's always like a workout plan. And then when she was doing college, that was it. She didn't, she didn't have this anymore. And yeah. she was, she didn't, none of it came from internal. It was all external motivation. So yeah. She had to then take years to develop this internal motivation and get her to get to the point to reach out to me. And, yeah. you know, she's back to where she was when she was in school. And she's actually now playing in these like intramural leagues. And, you know, it's like she's living her, her younger version self. Yeah, so, that's amazing. So, that yeah, I was feel amazing. Oh, my God. Like, she's so happy uh, for, for her as well. Uh, I, I have a client of mine. She had, she was out for like six, seven, eight months. This is, I mean, obviously a lot of people had COVID, but she actually had um, uh, the uh, mesothelioma, asbestos from inhaling asbestos. She lived in an apartment building where it was an old New York City building. This is what Mm. people use for insulation. I don't know, in the 50s and the 60s, these old buildings. She's living in it. She's sick all the time. No one knew why. (laughs) Hospitalized. Um, Hospitalized. Couldn't yeah. eat. Like she ended up just being like six months, could not do anything. And we had to start start at 
just basic things. I would walk around the neighborhood with her, help mm-hmm. her take steps. And then we would do a lot of floor routines. She couldn't really even stand and do some of these exercises. Everything had to yeah. be done on the, on the ground, on the floor. Uh, slowly working her way up to more weighted exercises and standing. And now she's doing so much of this stuff on her own. She works just as hard on her own than mm-hmm. as when she's with me. She's in better shape. She's in her early 50s. She says all the time that she's in better shape than she was when she was 30. You know, and, yeah, and a lot of that amazing. just, yeah, came from that. So I, I love these these little like stories that, um, you know, you hear about and what we were talking about before, like you, you're with them, even though you weren't with them always during the hard time because, but you hear about it. And yes. when they talk about it, it is emotional for them letting this out. It, it's yeah. a catharsis. It's a necessary catharsis. Mm-hmm. It helps them take the next step. Like, okay, you listen, we need to move on. I understand this is a hard, bad, rough thing that happened. Let's get it out. Let's set it out in the open and then let's just try to, you know, progress from it. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like both of these ladies were coming from a period of stagnancy where, you know, like number, the first story, especially stagnancy after university. And that is something that I experienced too, because you're out of school and, you know, you're, you're out of that atmosphere of like playfulness and being with friends and all of that. People get into their life and work starts and all of that. And then you get into a routine, which doesn't stop because you're always going to work. You're the nine to five life and all of that. And it's hard to maintain the momentum that you had in high school, in high school and college slash university. Um, I'm, I studied in the, in a university because I studied in Turkey. So I just, I keep saying university, but it it actually, yeah, it's the same as college. Yeah. It's the same thing. Well, no, I I feel like uh, a lot of times, Canadians will say university. I feel like that's why I, I hear it say university. Same thing. We the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, when somebody tries to accomplish after a state of stagnancy, that, that accomplishment feeds into their self-confidence and they feel like, okay, now they can do great things. So it actually has a ripple effect into different areas of their life, just making changes in their wellness health and wellness and health journey. So yeah, I, I absolutely love that you are in this space, Joshua, and for good reasons. You're knowledgeable, you're warm, you're easy to speak with, and I'm pretty sure anybody working with you is going to have a fantastic time with fantastic results, considering how passionate you are. So thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Sarah. I had a great time. And you're welcome. It was my pleasure, absolutely. What is the best way for people to get to you? Yeah, so our, our best tool is, is probably our website uh, with all social media, but still Mind Over Matter NYC is mm-hmm. us. You can contact us through there. You can follow all of, all of our social media handles on there. Uh, we have like an intake form if you're interested in having a, an assessment. We do complimentary assessments. It's like a 15, 20 minute Zoom call where we just try to get as much background on the individual and see what's their best option or options moving forward. Okay, awesome. Um, And everything is going to be listed in the show notes below for people that want to contact Joshua. I would highly recommend following him on social media as well. Today has been wonderful. I'll be one of the first people listening to the podcast back and making notes because you have shared so much knowledge. With years of experience and all the certifications, it's, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan already. So thank you for all that you brought to the show. And I hope to have you again. Pleasure. I hope to do so too.